Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing HCPC registration route for non-biomedical science students or non-biomedical science graduates. So you didn't do biomedical science in your undergrad and you're hoping to be HCPC registered. I think this question is something I've been asked severally and by private chats, private DM, comments, and today I'm going to be answering this question. So now let's just jump right into the video. I've gone back and done my research and I'm back here with premium information for you guys. So it's just going to be, this route is going to be the IBMS route. That's the Institute of Biomedical Science. And that's the body that is responsible for education of biomedical science here in the UK. Let's clear some basic things. Now I've had people ask me, oh I'm doing an MSc in Biomedical Science. Why can't I be licensed after doing MSc in Biomedical Science? Now the, the very important reason why you can't be licensed just by doing MSc Biomedical Science is because first and foremost HCPC registration or um, IBMS registration is based on assessment by your academic contents like what you've learnt in your basic uh, undergrad for biomedical science so now their course content is based on some core subjects and now these core subjects are basic and foundational and so masters is an advanced program and advanced one year program so basic foundational courses that you should take should have are courses that will probably take you more than one year and these courses cannot be sandwiched into a one-year program which you'll be doing and one thing that is important for you to note is that masters is an advanced course it's not teaching you the basics and it's just one year it's not enough time for them to go over the basics for everyone and then there is another reason why they cannot go over the basics because it's not only people that are non-biomedical science related that are doing those courses there are also biomedical science graduates who have actually done the basic and are coming for further education i.e people like me as a master's program cannot contain your core foundational program because it's a mix of different blend of people or different blend of people or different blend of graduates from different classes that's why even as a biomedical scientist your masters does not matter you most people that are hcpc registered you get hcpc registered even as a biomed with just your undergrad degree so you just need to provide a course content for them to see what you've been taught and that is based off what you will be registered on so registration basically is 90% or 100% solely based on academic content. I, I hope I've cleared that for people who always ask, oh, I'm doing a master's in biomedical science, can I get um, can I get registered? That is why your master's doesn't really matter in a way. Um, so let's get right into the steps for assessment. So now the very first thing you need to do is for you to be registered by HCPC if you didn't do a non-biomedical um, science undergraduate or like the program or route you first need to be assessed by the body which is IBMS that I have mentioned you need to be assessed by IBMS you need to be assessed and proven that okay whatever you've done is actually equivalent to a BSc honors biomedical science degree program now the very first thing you need to do is get your documents ready what are the documents you're going to need you're going to need your academic transcript you're going to need your course content or what they call module descriptor here. Yeah. So now what they call course content is like basically a breakdown of every single thing, like a break, breakdown of your course. Even for biomedical scientists, when registering for HCPC, like I mentioned, there's some, you have to actually provide your course content. So they want to know the details of what every course you took entailed. You know, your transcript just says biochemistry and maybe drug design your grade now your course content is going to be a little bit more detailed than that meaning it's going to talk about what the course is about i remember my course content being about a couple of pages so they need that course content of whatever you did in your undergrad so you probably have to get it from school and for HCPC, I don't know if it uh, matters for IBMS, it has to be stamped by your school most of the time once you're getting it from your school your head of department has to stamp it and say okay yes this is from me and i'm verifying that this person actually did this whole program now you also need a photocopy of your passport and you need a photocopy of your change of of a change of name if you're married as a lady or if you've changed your name for any reason you need to prove that okay the name on this document and the name i'm providing to you now 
we are actually the same person and blah 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 you know the drift the last thing you need to get is a, um, a photocopy of your UK any comparability um, assessment kind of thing for non UK qualification so if you were not trained in the UK you are trained in another country Nigeria India Ghana Kenya wherever you were trained you need to have your um, degree assessed by UK ENIC and this is basically telling the IDMS that okay my degree has been they are going to assess your degree and compare it to what the UK standard is like so whatever you're saying you studied is it the same thing as a UK degree is it equivalent to a UK um, college degree is, is the equivalent to an high school degree like basically just an assessment I if you have been in the process of you know schools and other countries like Canada and all you know there's kind of like the same assessment for them so UK ENIC is like the assessment body or degree assessment body for the UK so you're going to have to do that before starting your application with the IBMS so now you've gotten all this document ready first step then you start your application now for your application to even go through IBMS initially your application once you send your course content and everything you will first be assessed based on the number of like based on if you've done the core foundational courses so there's a list of core foundational courses that are available on the on the IBMS document and they are human anatomy physiology biochemistry cell biology molecular biology and genetics microbiology and immunology so these are the core courses that they believe if you're at least even trying to get access you should have done this course at one point or the other during your undergraduate degree now if you've done maybe just none of these courses or one or two of these courses like no i don't know the benchmark but if you've done few of these courses and not a majority of the course the courses are about i think six or seven imagine if you've done two or you've not done any or you've done probably three they will advise they won't even assess your application you'll be advised to go and study for a bsc biomedical science that go for in normal english you're going to they will just tell you go for an undergrad in biomedical science there's no need to be assessing you because you don't even have the core subject but then if you've done majority or any of this like majority or all of this core subjects in your undergrad your application will go for that to like the main process and they will ask you to pay an application fee i do not know the amount uh, for the application fee but once you start the application you fill in your personal details you submit document and then you wait you submit your application and now the possible out there are two possible outcome of your application the first one is application accepted meaning that you've been assessed your degree qualification has been assessed and they believe that your degree is equivalent to a bsc or non biomedical science that so there is actually no need for you to do any extra thing like any extra course they will, they will give you a letter stating that okay this is your degree is equivalent to a bsc honors yeah then you'll be advised to start your ibms registration training portfolio that's like in, in in simple english like almost telling you to go for something like an internship so you'll be asked to train at a lab accredited by ibms for their registration for their for their pre-registration training so it's just basically like internship and you know getting lab experience for them to just make sure that oh okay you've gotten lab experience you have the academic part the course content covered now you also have the lab content covered and once you do that you'll be able to get the IBMS certificate of competence that is the same thing which they give their biomedical science students on completion of their degree program and whatever training they are meant to do so that's the same certificate they give them so you're going to get that at the end of the day and that is all you need to do before you go on to your HCPC registration the second outcome is application partially received meaning that your application okay they've assessed you and they've seen that okay you've done a couple of the courses but you still need to top up you still need to do some supplementary courses you still need to do some courses for them to now fully vet that okay your degree plus what you've done now has given you that qualification of biomed bsc honors biomedical science so majority of the time they will tell you the courses you need to take to top up your to top up your degree uh, it's basically like a top up and then they would not advise you 
um, they won't advise you on what university or where to go or what to do or you will just be asked to go to an IBMS accredited university or university program and where yeah, they are running a BSc program you make the program lead of the undergraduate study and tell them okay this is it i need supplementary pass now i think there are there are financial implications to this but it differs with school obviously it's just like school fees kind of thing so it differs with school once again so the school and the program lead will have to advise you what to do now i'll advise that this will be better to do if you are currently doing your masters in the uk because if you're doing your masters you could just take these courses alongside your master courses why am i saying this is because imagine if you're going to be do, if maybe you're to do let me say three courses or one course for example maybe just hematology and hematology in the university you want to study in is done maybe in the first semester or the second semester and it's like a second semester module and it like takes three months you're going to have to go through the three months like go through all the modules together with the undergrad also and also do the assessment with other students like you just you know how in nigeria uh, apologies to anyone who's not in Nigeria, but I think it works also for other countries. You know how maybe you fail a course and you have to retake a course kind of thing. And if you're retaking the course, nobody will call you specially to come and redo it, except maybe few schools that have summer program. And I think there are really few. You have to actually go back and sit with the next class that is doing the course. So basically, that it. Nobody will bring you out separately and say oh they want to teach you this because most of the time you have to actually go to a university that is already running a bachelor's degree program in biomedical science and is IBMS accredited so you have to run the course of the module which was during the current test that is working so it's always advisable like if you're doing your master's just know you're doing everything at once trust me it saves you the stress once you've completed that the school or the program leader will send a letter to IBMS stating your grade and saying oh you've completed this course You've done this, you've done that, and once I get my seat, they will say, "Oh, good, good child, not good child," but they will say, "Oh, well done," and your supplementary courses will now be assessed in addition to your degree, and then you will now be given the letter of um, letter that whatever you've done, your degree plus your supplementary course has now given you the equivalent degree of a BSc honor biomedical science, and you'll be given the letter stating that and also you'll be advised to start your pre-registration training portfolio now one thing to note is that processes like this do not take one day or one month even HCPC registration in its fastest takes like four to six weeks on an average so if you're going to be going through this route it's important to plan and know what everything like have everything you need together and if you're doing a master's yet plan to work towards it like do it during your program so that way it's easier for you that once you're done with your masters you're not now battling with because if you're done with your masters and you're doing that on the side you also have to consider what job am i doing while i'm doing that so that's one thing that's actually important to consider so i will advise that you start this process early as early as you can i know situation differs for a couple of people now everything i have said is also embedded in an ibms document for non-biomedical science graduate i don't have a link to it i got the documents while researching and reaching out to people so i don't know the exactly the document is and i don't know how i'll be able to share it but hopefully i'll be at the end of this video i'll just you know put screenshots of the pages I'll, I'll try to put screenshot of the pages on at the end of the video maybe you can screenshot and you know read through it or you can go to the IBMS website and look through it now you've gotten that what do you do next you go further to do your HCPC registration now just a summary of HCPC registration if you're curious about HCPC the chances are that you've watched one or two or three videos about HCPC registration. So basically it's saying now HCPC registration is online which is way easier trust me. So you just have to go to their website, start an application, submit the necessary documents, fill the online application and once you're done you need some documents you need to certify. So you can either notarize it, certify slash notarize, you can either notarize it by um, a court or by a, a notable uh, person of good standing in the community. It could be someone, maybe a lecturer, like someone that's of good standing in the community. 
and once you're done with your application i think immediately or within 48 hours you be sent a link for payment for something called a scrutiny fee that so that's the application you need to actually pay for them to actually assess your application and i think it's about 400 and something to 500 pounds the last time i did it it was within that range and i think it doesn't change so much so that's what you'll be using for your registration and after they assess your application for that will take like an, an average four to six weeks after your application is assessed HEPC will reach out to you that your application has been assessed and for you you also send the letter and everything you have from IBMS alongside for your documents when sending it to HCPC. And once you do that and HCPC assesses your application, they'll tell you, oh, your application has been successful. You need to pay a certain amount of money um, to be registered for your license, which is about £190 or £196 for a two years registration. Now, the way the two year registration works is like it's a two year cycle. So, somebody will register November 2021, and someone will go registered last year, and somebody who's going to get registered early this year. All registration is going to lapse or is going to expire by November 2023, I think November or ending of this year. 2023 and so at the end of 2023 everybody has to renew their license again but basically that is it if you have any question concerning this process or this route feel free to pop it in chat below and i'm going to answer to the best of my knowledge now 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 before you go one last thing to say my next video coming up is going to be a video on nhs jobs so yes, people have been asking me, how do you get a job in the NHS? How is getting a job in the NHS like? How is journey? Are there jobs after school? So, 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 and so, how do you apply? Now, I couldn't answer this question because obviously I do not have the experience for that. But now I've finally been able to have an interview with someone who has the experience and who, who has see knowledge for, like, let, let me just put it out there content knowledge on that particular matter is a lot and um, trust me you don't want to miss it so don't forget to subscribe don't forget to click this um notification bell to get notified whenever i post a video because i'm going to post that video like a thief in the night now the person that is going to be talking about this status is someone who has been on this channel for yeah the person has been on this channel before so if you're if you're an OG, you probably know our guest. If you if you're not an OG and you just joined, welcome, no problem. You can just scroll through my content and see who are the people I've invited on this channel. I'll just make a guess and let's see what happens. Thank you so much and bye. Come so